On the Grass Snap app, there are four main buttons to choose from. The first one we're gonna talk about today is the Add a New Transect. This is the first place you're gonna go when you're setting up a new monitoring site for your pasture. The first thing you're gonna do is put in a permanent field marker and in the sand hills, we can use a short stake and pound it into the ground. Usually it's about 18 inches and we pound it into the ground about six inches. You can also use a flat metal disc that's painted and put it on the ground as well. But you wanna have a low um, field marker, permanent field marker, so cattle aren't attracted to it and trample around it. So once you have that in place, you will actually take your picture at the field marker, standing at that field marker. Um, you'll look out onto the horizon to find a photo point and take more detailed pictures of that, that pasture with photo plots looking down at the soil surface. So if we go to add a new transect, it's gonna ask us for our pasture name. So we'll just put in the West Corkin is our pasture name. If you're using transects, you could also enter that name as well. It's gonna ask you if that pasture name is correct because this is going to be photo stamped on all of your pictures and all of your data. So you need to make sure that's, that it's correct and um, this is the name that's gonna use from here on out. So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, look out and take a photo point. So what you're looking for is one point on the horizon that you're gonna line up your picture with year after year. And this is gonna be our landscape view that shows us grass height, um, the soil condition, if there's any erosion. It will help us with types of species, but it's not gonna be as detailed. One thing you can use if you're gonna do this landscape view is called a perspective pole, and this will help you figure out the, the height of the grass. And so what we did is just used a rake handle that's five foot um, tall, and we just put alternating stripes, black and white, on there. And the, if you have black on top, it shows up better in your pictures when you do that. So if you can have this in all of your photo point or landscape pictures, it makes it easier to see how tall that grass is from year to year. So once we've taken our photo point, we just press the white circle here and that takes the picture for us. And you can see it's named my picture with my pasture name, has my date on there, and this is our photo point. So this is gonna be named the point picture. It also has the GPS coordinates and since I have cell service here, it's going to automatically put my GPS coordinates into GrassSnap. If I didn't have uh, cell service, I would have to use a GPS unit and manually enter that data and GrassSnap will ask you for that information. You only have to enter it once, it'll keep it for the next year. So make sure that you have your GPS unit and that you get the correct uh, GPS coordinates put down in GrassSnap. So now that we're done taking our photo point, we can decide if we want to keep it or retake that picture. I'm going to keep this one. And now it's going to ask me to take a photo plot looking down. And so I'm actually going to be looking down at that soil surface. For plant size reference, we like to use a, a hoop. This is called um, just a, a plot frame or a, or a hoop. And you can lay this down on the, the surface and actually see uh, the different sizes of plants and how much bare soil you have in there. So this is what we use for plant size reference in our photo plots. We can take more than one photo plot so it gives us a little bit better idea of the pasture that we're in. So if I go ahead and press the white circle, it's going to ask me if I want to keep or retake this one. And then here is where I can actually add more plots and you can have up to five. So we have four plots remaining. So we can just keep taking pictures and adding plots. And how I like to do this um, is to step out from my field marker or measure out and take a photo plot and then step out or measure out so many feet and then take another photo plot and just continue until I'm out of my five pictures. Okay, so we're just gonna say that we're done on this one. And now it's gonna take us to the next step, which is the grazing indexes. If you live in the, the Nebraska sand hills, you'll use the Sandris grazing index. If you're in Western Nebraska on native cool season pastures, you'll use that one. And then for the brome irrigated pasture, um, smooth brome is a hard grass to have a grazing index for. So there is more information on how to graze those smooth 
grown pastures in there as well. So the grazing index um, gives you a place to put comments and this will be saved with your pictures and your data and then it also has some different columns for you to fill out and if you ever have questions on, on any of those um, categories or columns, if you see a little I button with, with a blue circle around it, you can touch that for more information. And it will bring up more information about that, that section. So we're just going to say we were in that pasture from March to April. Um, we're a little bit dry right now, so we'll do a negative one on that. And then our end of season residual, since we were dry, we just didn't have quite as much. The other thing you can do is type in comments. So you can put your grazing records here. Um, if you do clipping for production, you could type this in as well. If you have a fire or a hail, you can enter that information. And that way, when you go back to look at those pictures, you, it helps you remember what you had in there that year. So I'm just gonna put in that I had 100 pairs from um, March 1st to April 30th. And so that will help me remember what my stocking rate and how long I was in that pasture for. Um, we could also put in there if we had an early freeze or if we had a dry spring. You could put in your precipitation records there too. But it's just a place for you to get that data and collect it and have it all in one, one place. Hit done when you're finished. And it's always gonna ask you if you're sure that you're done just in case you hit the, the button and that wasn't the one that you chose. The other thing we have in here is the apparent trend score. And if you're using GrassSnap for the CSP enhancement activity PLT02, which is the monitoring one, you have to have a photo point, a photo plot, and then you can either choose to do the apparent trend score or Sandris or a similar system like that. So if you're doing this for CSP, um, you would want to do your apparent trend. Um, just choose your ecological site. You can, can see there's a list of them there. Um, if for some reason your site's not on there, you could put it under comments. So I'm just gonna say I'm a Sandy. Um, your reference plant community is gonna be different for each pasture. So for mine here, it's gonna be switchgrass. And then we're just a little bit below normal for precip, and so that's what I'm gonna choose. And then again, our categories have an exclamation, explanation of what, that, what those numbers mean, so you can make sure that you get the right number when you use those. So this is a requirement for um, CSP. Again, you could put comments in, how many pairs, the dates you were in there, just to help you remember that information. So once we are done with that, we are done adding our new transect. Um, we're only gonna do this once. From now on, when we go to monitor this pasture, we're gonna choose a different button. But all of our pictures and data have now been saved to the albums button. If you want to have more information on the other buttons, we have other YouTube videos available for that.